weird fucking guys. You're doing a manly thing and you're a fucking dork. I got my lightsaber wearing my Pokemon hat today. <laughs> Wow, you're a real renaissance man, you know that? Goddamn man child. What a fucking dork. Yeah. But he's our dork. This is not for children. Jesus Christ, how many times are you going to say hello? Hey there, John. What's up, dude? So is this the podcast? This is the this is the new thing we're doing. We're doing video now. No, I understand that, but I mean, so we're not. You gonna have to pl- look sideways to me. So we're not going to play the intro in the. Beginning? We're going to fucking the intro already played. The the, oh, the audience heard the intro because they I heard it. I edited it, but we didn't hear it. We didn't hear it because. So this is a whole new like recording format. I'm all fucked up, man. Yeah. I don't know. I'm well, trying usually to... like we sit here and you play the intro and then we just start recording on the on the laptop. Yeah, but the problem is, is this humans is are thing? dipshits and they can't see our our fucking images. All right. So now they can see that I'm a hardcore alt right conservative yeah. crazy We're on the racist set of, uh... homophobic piece of shit no good <laughs> motherfucking scumbag. We're on the set of American History X down here. We're here to uh spout our propaganda so that we can <laughs> infiltrate your children's head. Chris is a chicken hawk. <laughs> Or maybe I'm just a veteran and I like. Uh, nah, the American I appreciate flag, being an American. Since guy. people don't usually see the set and they don't know what it looks like down here, Chris has an American flag because we live in America. It has nothing to do with anything else. He's not like an ultra right conservative Republican who. Ah, I mean, behind you know that I mean? door, yeah, behind but... that door, yeah. that's where I hide my swastikas. You know, don't tell my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's I had a guy. Like that. I had a guy that tried to, like, accuse me of that one time. Why? Well, he was, you know, he accused me of being racist, and I said, uh, here, here's a picture of my family and me. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, oh, I'll bet you do that just just so you could say all this yeah. stuff. And I'm like, say what? I didn't say anything about black people, first of all. Right. Yeah, you, know, you fucking moron. It's like being, like, against gay people but having a boyfriend or something. Dude, so yeah. I know a guy like that. Yeah. I know a very conservative gay guy that, like, habitually... Like gets drunk and says nasty shit to gay about, people. Really? <laughs> yeah, but dude. He's gay. But he's like sitting next to his like uh, very, very uh, flamboyant boyfriend he's, in a bar. So and he, like, he's like the bear, and the other guy's like a twink. I think he just like, talks shit. I think he like, dude. There's a lot of trolls out there. You yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah, I could. See, well, I mean, trolling people for the sake of trolling them, I understand that. Like, just to have fun with people, but like. I don't know. It would be an awful lot of uh, work to go through to, like, Oof. I'm going to raise an interracial family. <laughs> yeah. But I did. I'm going to commit. I am the ultimate troll. Yeah, that's crazy. That, why would somebody think that? On Tuesday nights, I go to my clan meetings, you know? My wife doesn't know. She actually thinks that I'm just shopping, you know? Well, she does know. She supports it, you know? We're yeah. uh, Very the, progressive. The clan is very progressive nowadays. I mean, you saw that. You know, Chappelle skit, right? Yeah, yeah, with uh, Clayton Bigsby. Well, yeah, but there's also gay Klansmen now, too. Uh, they wear pink instead Mr. of white. Mr. Show had, like, a sketch like this, too, one time where they had, like, a black Klansman or something. Really? Yeah, a long time ago. Oh. That's, like, the smartest comedy show ever written. I tried to watch it, dude. I couldn't... couldn't oh. I, don't, I didn't get Maybe too far Maybe you need to watch it. it with, like, a friend or something. You know, sometimes I think like, I you gotta... watch something by yourself, you're like, ah, this ain't that great. But then you watch it with, like, somebody, and you start to, like, you see that, like, oh, I understand now. You're, I think you ever that, have that. Well, I also think that you miss so much because in the beginning you're watching it and you're like trying to understand the story. You know, like, like so. There's uh, really no story. Yeah, but it's the same thing for me and this guy Tim Robinson, dude. The more I watch his episodes, he's got three seasons. They're pretty quick. They're short little clips on each episode. But the more I watch it and pay attention to weird little shit that he says, 
I fucking die laughing. Yeah, yeah you know? it's got like a performance comedy type thing. Dude, it is like unbelievable. So I I'm think gonna... like you can't really judge anything by like the first few episodes yeah. of anything. I hated like, Trailer Park Boys when I first started watching it. Yeah, I know you so didn't I've never really it, gotten but... into that, but like even like like I told you before, like The Wire, I watched the first episode like five times before I ever continued the series. Yeah. It took me fifteen years to watch The Wire. The Sopranos, the first season, is not a good measuring stick for the show. Well, the you first know. season was him with the therapist, right? Well, yeah, but it sat through the whole series. But there's something about the way that it's presented and written in that first season that really says, like, look, you can see we're kind of going through some growing pains here. Do and you then think they that... kind of come into their own. So you got to like give things a chance to see them come into their own and like form their identity a little bit. I think when it comes to coming up with an idea, especially for like a show like that, yeah, I often have wondered... Because I don't think a lot of people realized that that was the actual premise of the show is this this uh, kind of sociopathic mobster it's a great that show. was going to therapy. Mm -hmm. And then, like, uh, I think the story got more involved about the actual Sopranos and, and their business and, and all that stuff. But in the beginning, I kind of wondered if maybe the focus was supposed to be on the therapist and, like, this I think relationship. For me, what it is is, like, it's not – it is a mob show, right? But it's not necessarily just about the mob. Yeah, yeah. It's really about existential dread. Now they can see when yeah. every time they every hear time a lump, I tap or they something, can, they, they can, say, they can it's see John tapping on shit. Fucking John yeah. keeps touching the mic. He keeps touching right. the spit guard. <laughs> My daughter fucking spit on this yeah, thing for she's real. She's like, right oh, there. really? There's a spit protector? <laughs> yeah, well, that's why she's chained to the toilet right now. Yeah. She but, I'll uh, let her off in like five or six hours. So, <laughs> what was it? So, like, the parts with the therapist, though, in The Sopranos are kind of like. I don't know, like, it's almost like this little intermission to explain his condition. Yeah. Like his thought process, it, like, gives you a light into, like, the decision-making of where the show goes. Sure. To figure out the way this guy thinks. It's a great show. I, I think The Sopranos is, like, one of the... And, I mean, yeah, I identify with it a lot, but I think it's one of the best shows ever. I think it changed television. It changed episodic television. Um. Well, I think HBO... Had a lot of shows. Yeah, I mean even were... Oz. Oz was Dude, like a game changer. Oz was great. Like all of so you go H... back and watch it now, you're like, this show sucks. So HBO, and I don't think so. Mm. I watched, I've watched it, and I was like, dude, it's still raw television. Yeah. yeah, because it's like, you know, prior to that, it was like Family Ties and like all this like. But even Gee, like, Ma, not even I can't that, believe but like, that. Like NYPD know? Blue and stuff like that, and you know, like they were kind of going in that direction, but then all of a sudden, this show like. Oz comes on and you go, oh, like I could watch this every week. Well, and, and it was intriguing. brutal because it yeah. was more realistic. Like, dude, you yeah, watched, yeah. there was scenes where like, like the main character, uh, what's his name? Like gets raped by the Nazi dude. And you're just like, oh. A beecher? Uh, I, I think is that's his name. The lawyer who goes yeah, to yeah, jail? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was drunk driving and ran yeah. over a kid or something. Yeah. Yeah, well, he's like. Maybe it's the production value of the show that I don't like. I mean, well, the lines were so it was decent. shot on SD, standard yeah. definition. So, like when you watch it now, it looks gritty and and digitized because they had. It to, looks almost European. Well, yeah, they had to transfer it to HD, which is it's not going to transfer because the information isn't there. Right. You know, that's a technical thing. But uh, you guys watching, you're in HD. You can see my finger. <laughs> But, um, You're excited about this video thing. Dude, man. I'm like... He's uh, been talking about doing video for like forever, and I've just I, been like, ah, oh, man, I don't want people to see my fat ass on fucking TV. <laughs> <laughs> and now then, you get uh, to see... Aren't you glad you yeah. tuned in? You can see that we're chunky oh. little 40-year-old fuck-ups. <laughs> they look like they sound. <laughs> <laughs> now I can see why they talk about yeah. food so much. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but uh, yeah, I just, I just wanted to like have a good podcast and stuff but you were like so i was i was like cool man i'll do whatever you want to do you know well i mean i think that people tune into youtube a lot you know yeah, it yeah, might yeah. it might help grow the show a little bit because i think we have a good thing i really do i believe in this you know i love talking to you uh i just uh you know i want people to keep listening to us I just, so that eventually they'll give us the money out of their pockets yeah. i'm like I like I'm like a breakfast. less intrusive government employee. Like, I want your money, but I'm not willing to steal it from you. I want you to donate it to yeah. us, you know? Yeah. I just we should start a free non coffee in the breakfast, really, honestly. Well, you know, we provide that, too. Yes. You know? We should start a non-profit, dude. A non-profit? So, my wife and I have been talking about, like, non-profit organizations, which is comical to me, because they say non-profit, but... Uh, they make a lot of money. All of the people that work <laughs> for them... 
that started them are all millionaires and billionaires. Yeah. So like, what do you mean not profit? Like, and then they like readjust, like, like they were like, well, there's two terms. There's not profit. And then there's not for profit, which means something a little di- no no no. They're, that's the same fucking idea. Mm-hmm. You're like now you're trying to put like a oh well there's a little spin oh this or over here these are actual people that don't take money from it. Dude, you're all fucking scumbags. Yeah. And I'm not upset because I'm yeah. going to do it too. Yeah. I'm going to start a nonprofit for like uh, my walls need to get painted or I don't fucking know, but like. I think, you know, for everybody that likes to act like they're not a capitalist or whatever. Yeah, yeah. We're all pretty, like, entrepreneurial kind of people. I mean, like, if you're out there door dashing. Yeah. You're kind of, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Monetizing your services, you know? Yeah, man. And, and I almost... I don't, I look, don't during the week, people. If I'm awake, I want to be getting paid for it. Yeah. And that's how I think. Like, that's why I do the deliveries and Dude, the when I talk like to that. you, I think somebody should be paying me for this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> somebody should be paying me to sit here with you, right? And, and eat my breakfast you. and drink my cranberry right. juice. Exactly. In my nifty fifties cup. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Joe and Theo. Yeah. Little endorsement there, bud. You can send a check to me. <laughs> I'll give John All his right. usual percentage of five percent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so listen, earlier this week I told you that we were gonna record uh today mm-hmm. and you were like yeah, man, I'm uh, I'm being a, a little bit more of a curmudgeon, which I love the <laughs> fact that you use this word. But you were like, dude, I'm in the fucking dumps, man. I'm having a, a rough week. So you promised me that you would tell me the story of your week. Like, how oh, dude, how I mean, bad was it? I had a fucking day the other day. Uh, like I told you, I do the uh, I do the pickups and deliveries in yeah. my vehicle. I'm trying to get off. I'm trying to, like, start a small side business like courier system. like a courier service right yeah so um i set out the other morning i woke up at like 4 40 in the morning to do what would have amounted to about 200 dollars worth of work gotcha two jobs you know probably four hours worth of work okay make 200 dollars. that's awesome it's great that's 50 dollars an hour exactly so i set out to do that i make my first delivery i'm on my way back i drove down to a place called hancock's bridge in new jersey Okay. Which is like, it's almost like a lot of farmland down there. It's a really nice, peaceful drive. Yeah, I never even it's heard like of it. It's like five in the morning. So like, there's nobody on the road. It was a nice drive. I'm on my way back. I'm getting off on the Commodore Barry Bridge. And uh, I'm getting on, I just got into Pennsylvania. I'm on the Commodore Barry. And I hear hissing outside of my guy. Stop hitting that goddamn table, it. man. <laughs> so like, I hear hissing outside the car. And then my tire leg comes on. I'm like, ah, oh, here we go. So... I knew I had a flat tire, so I pull over on the side of the road. I get out, I look at it, and, and I'm thinking it would have been my front tires because I did need front tires. Yeah. Like, I absolutely needed them. And uh, I get out, and I go, it's not the front tires. And I look at the back, and I'm like, imagine that. Like, the tire that I didn't think was going to go flat is the one that's flat. So I uh, I called up uh, my mechanic and stuff. He was going to come tow me out and everything. And that would have cost me, like, $150 just to get towed. And then... um. So I called this tire place, and they were like, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, we could do... I told them what's going on, and I was like, yeah, I think I'm probably going to need three tires, considering the two are messed up. And he was like, well, then you need four. Yeah. And I was like, okay, whatever. Well, you you do it in pairs. You do the right. front two or the rear two. You don't do same side. You don't do diagonals. Right. You do them as, a, as an axle, okay. you know? Well, that makes sense. So I ended up getting four tires. Yeah. And... Um, but thankfully, a cop shows up. Chester cop shows up behind me, and he had a guy come out and help me put the donut on the car and everything like that, because I don't have a jack or nothing. But I had a donut. Nice. So this guy comes out, he helps me, and then I go to start the car up. Did you show him, like, a little cleavage or something? Like, no, how did you get the cop to do anything, to do dude. You didn't flirt with him? He was just a cool cop. He just pulled over, he talked to me a little bit. I Usually, I tell there, my wife to unbutton It was like having little. AAA without having AAA. It was perfect. <laughs> you know, so there was, like, a little silver lining there. And then, um, so... I, I drive to the, the tire place. I get my tires on. Tires got put on in about 20 minutes. These guys got four jacks out, jacked my car up. Three uh, three dudes just put tires on the car. I was done. Like Three dudes gangbanged your, your shit. Pretty much, you man. Know? They just teamed up on it, got it done. I get back out Plow there. I had one it. more job to do. I had to go to Philly and get some paperwork stamped at the U.S. Customs House. That's all I had to do. I figured, I'm going to be in there five minutes. No big deal. Nice. I get there. I pull up. I park. There's a sign that says three-hour parking. Yeah. And then right next to it was a no parking zone. 
So maybe the ass of my car was in the no parking zone or something. Really? But either I don't know. Look, here's the deal, dude. I don't think they're, like, for what happened, I don't think it happens because, like, you know, just by chance. Like, I had to fuck something up here. You know, like, I had to... Yeah, I don't know, man. I feel like the PPA are a bunch of cunts. I'm Uh, sure they are. They're on my cunt list. Well, dude, I thought I was going to be in there for five minutes. I get out of the car, go in there. I'm in there for, like, 40 minutes. Yeah. And I'm like, come on, dude. Like, this is crazy. Like... They have the cushiest job in there. They're not doing nothing. It's a DMV, nothing. dude. It's the same thing. It's not a DMV. This is a government job. No, I know. Job. I know. This but I'm custom. saying it's the same type of employee. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a government like, job. Okay. Yeah. You're really wasting my time right now. The and, lady yeah, behind the counter is like... Totally standoffish. These yeah. guys were Fuck totally them, standoffish. They didn't want to talk. They were like, yeah, give us a minute. And I'm like, okay. You just give sit you over a minute. There. While they're sitting there playing fucking solitaire. So it's like a know? half an hour I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, God. 45 minutes goes by and I'm like, let me go check on my car. You have to check on my car. Car's gone. Damn. And I'm like, and I'm so walking. why didn't they boot it first? I don't understand. Well, here's what I don't understand: is like, okay, you got a fifty-one dollar ticket if I parked in the no parking zone, which I'll take responsibility for it. You know, like, you don't I have must... any outstanding tickets. No, 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 no. Yeah, you don't strike no, me as that kind no. of guy. So, I must have been parked somehow in the wrong spot, like in front of a fire hydrant while the building across whatever, the street was on fire. Whatever it was, <laughs> you know. So. I mean, within 45 minutes, they came and took my car. Damn, bro. And, like, in my head, I knew that that's what happened. Like, yeah. I just knew it. I was like, nobody stole it. You know, nobody's going to steal yeah. my Barbie Jeep. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I just knew that that was what it was. And then, like, trying to get on, on the phone with, like, Philadelphia Parking Authority is a nightmare. Yeah. So, I go back into the customs office. I have to go through the metal detector all over again. And I go in there to get the paperwork. And I'm like, dude, my, my car got towed. And they were like, oh, man, that sucks. Like, okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah. So. Fuck you, you're on your own. <laughs> another 45 minutes, I'm sitting there on the phone trying to get a hold of somebody. Turns out they towed my car two miles away to Oregon Avenue. I had yep. to go get yep. it out. But it was just like, it felt like my day was like the first 20 minutes of stripes. Like, you know, like Bill Murray has like the worst day ever. <laughs> like in the first two hours of the of the day, he like loses his job, his loses girlfriend his car. Loses him. <laughs> Breaks up with his girlfriend, loses his apartment, like, and that's like the catalyst for him joining the army or whatever. That's what it felt like. It was well, like you should have continued down this path dude. It felt the like army. the universe was trying to separate me from my jeep. Like, <laughs> look, whatever's going to happen today, in the end, you and the jeep are getting separated somehow. So I spent my whole morning doing that, which should have took me four hours to make a hundred and ninety some dollars. Ended up costing me like five hundred bucks. Mm. You know, like in a day, it was crazy. Damn, sucked, man. Wild. Well, but we... you know what? Like I always say, things could always be worse. Right? Yeah. You know, like I could have not had the money to pay for it. I could have like really been like stranded, which yeah, I wasn't. Yeah. And you know, it's it's not that big of a deal. It's not gonna like it's not the end of the world. Like yeah, you yeah. gotta work a little bit harder. Yeah, well, this morning was uh, another little attribute. Yeah, today, yeah, it's yeah. cold out, and the bat- like I told you. No, nah, dude, it had nothing to do with the cold. Your battery was the fucking battery done. The battery was done, yeah. <laughs> yeah that was dude. it. Yeah, I went yeah so today we had to replace the battery in my car before we came down here and did this. And, yeah, man. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. But whatever, man. It's over and done with now. All right. Onward and upward. It's going to be. It's going to be a much better day. Oh, yeah. It has to be. Dude, we're down here. We rearranged this room so that you guys could see our fucking faces. Hi. <laughs> Hi. And we got some grits and eggs. And, grits and eggs. Yeah. How'd you like them grits? I'm not a fan of grits. Dude, fuck grits, man. Who that the fuck terrible. eats grits? And it's not in like, like... I'm not eating it. I don't want to eat it. My wife know, maybe, keeps throwing that shit I think if it. maybe like if I had had it before or something, like I knew a certain way to prepare them or whatever. And then she yells down the steps, oh, how come you didn't tell me it needed salt and pepper? How the hell would I know? How the fuck would I know? Yeah, as far as I could tell, it, it, it needs uh, a fucking trash can wrapped around. <laughs> <laughs> I eat grits the same way I eat coleslaw. I just <laughs> scrape it into the trash. Yeah. You, the only time I can eat coleslaw is on a fish taco. That is yeah. the only fucking time that I'll eat coleslaw, yeah. you know? And it's like, I have to like specifically not look at it. To know, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, Sometimes I'm that's like a, that's the hurdle is like looking at the food. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I ate them, uh. I saw you ate some octopus tacos. Octopussy tacos. That was crazy, man. You did, what did you, order them by mistake? Dude, you want to hear that story? That's a funny story. Sure, go for it. So I was hungry. What else do we got? To do? We got nothing going on. We got nothing going on. But we got video. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, 
Dude, my wife orders from this guy uh, that does these. Um, what's his it's name? It's that uh, Toro barbecue. Toro right? barbecue, so dude, is fucking great amazing. Food. Yeah, great. So food. it's Spanish style barbecue. He's got uh, he's got some uh, steak skewers that are fucking amazing, dude. Usually when, whenever I try to get steak skewers for for some reason, to me they use a chunk of meat that is really tough. Right. So no matter how I try to prepare it, it just doesn't seem to be that. I can't keep it soft. You know, yeah. I can't I can't keep it. You can't get that tenderness to it. It's just too it. chewy. Yeah. That guy, I don't know if he's cutting up filet mignons. I don't know what the fuck he's using, oh. but it is super soft. Yeah. You take a bite out of it, and it, like, just falls apart on that's you. And nice. you're like, dude, that's awesome. So, um, so my wife calls me. She knows I'm running late, and I'm fucking running around like a nut. And I'm like, dude, I'm fucking starving. I was supposed to cook. I'm not going to, I don't have time. I'm not, I'm not home yet, you know? So she says, why don't we order from Toro's Barbecue? And I'm like, fuck yeah, dude, let's do that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm never disappointed. I love the skewers. There's uh, they got a couple different types of tacos that are fucking amazing. They give you some kind of, it looks, it looks, uh, I don't know, like some kind of fucking. Is it like the onion? Yeah, like, there's uh, some kind of dippy sauce that you dip it in. I think they usually serve that with uh, like. Burrito tacos. Yeah. It's like onion. Almost looks like almost like an looks au like jus a, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not like a thick gravy. No, nah, like, no, nah, yeah. man. It looks like a soup, honestly. Yeah, it looks like a know? soup. But it's fucking it's good. It's tasty. You yeah, know? It's some tasty shit. So I'm like, I'm all excited. I'm like, yeah, dude, she's going to get some tacos. She's going to get some fucking chick some uh, steak skewers with some yeah. rice and some fucking veggies and shit. And I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking, I'm like ready. I'm like getting hungry. I'm getting hungry right now thinking about right. it. And I'm like driving home. Finally, she fucking texts me, and she's like, uh, I fucked up. And I'm like, I got oh, octopus tacos. What do you mean you I don't give a up? shit. I'll fucking eat it. So, dude, <laughs> I was so fucking hungry that she's like, uh, yeah, I accidentally ordered the octopus uh, tacos, and I'm not fucking eating these yeah. things. And I was like... I don't give a fuck. Uh, no, no, dude. It, I was like super... I was like, well, did you, you get the steak skewers? Did you get, like, other tacos? Like, what? what is the other meal? And she's like, well, I got beef tacos for me. Wait, you got me fucking octopus tacos? Yeah. Like, hold on. Like, you fucked my meal up? You didn't right. fuck your meal up. Or did you give... Did you steal, take my meal? Is that what happened here? You didn't... You, right. You're not gonna fucking... So I'm like, all right, whatever. I'll fucking... I'll eat them. And dude, as I'm looking at this thing with these fucking tentacles, yeah, tentacles. these little circles, these little... I know you The mean, little dude. suction cups on its fucking legs. I did it one time know? at Spazza's. I got a seafood risotto... And they brought it out, and I'm thinking, okay, cool, seafood and rice, no big deal. You yeah. Know? There's, like, Dude, octopus tentacles my fucking... coming out, and I was like, I can't eat this. So I'll say this. I ate it, and it was really good. Yeah. But my brain still had a hard time grasping that, The visual. Like, yeah, yeah, like, my brain is like, dude, what the fuck is right. this? That's you wild. Know? So I ate it. I ate all three tacos. It was good. Listen, Toro's does their thing. They're right. fucking awesome, you know? So I ate it. I mean, I'm not in a hurry to get them again. No. But if somebody mean. accidentally gets them, I'll try them again because I think it's also about like repetition. Right. Which I think is comical because I love like these two shows alone on History Channel. You mm -hmm. ever seen it? No. And then there's another one, Naked and Afraid, which I'm sure I've you've seen, seen. I've heard of it. I've never watched it. They're survivalist shows. Right. They're like, you know, like, I don't, I, I can't even find episodes of Survivor, because I would like to see how they format them shows. But Alone is awesome, because they take 10 contestants, and they all are allowed to bring 10 items with them, and then they space them all out about three miles apart on, like, Vancouver Island or up in Canada somewhere, or one time they did it down in Patagonia. Mm -hmm. So these people go into the wilderness with their 10 fucking items, create a shelter, go hunting and fishing, and live alone until there's nobody left. And they, they have no communication with the outside world. They're just there. They have uh, a box with all these cameras and shit in it. Every couple days or a week or so, the camera crew comes back, gives them new batteries, charges everything for them, and then takes the footage and brings it back. And, and then they start editing and, you know, looking to see what the person's been up to. And they watch all this video footage. And that's, so that's the premise of the show. You're a guy on the show. Me and you are three to four or five miles apart. And we're not allowed to like make communication. You're not allowed to take a hike for three fucking miles and go find the other guy. And like, you know, Hey, you still over there? 
Not allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. You just stay in your little area. You hunt. You fish. You kill any fucking thing that you're hungry. If you're hungry enough, fucking eat eat it. it. Right. So, dude, it's kind of... uh, It's amazing. I think it's the greatest fucking show I've ever seen. Honestly. Well, because on a human connection level, when they usually get to the last person, the last fucking person, they're starving, dude. These people are skinny... And they're malnutritioned. Wow. And they're fucking holding on for dear life. Because they have this big goal. They get $500,000 if they win. And and a lot of them have, like, these really great, like, listen, man, I'm in fucking debt. And I've been doing survival stuff my whole life. And this is going to help set us up so me and my wife and kids, we can buy a farm and we can go live on the farm. Like, they have plans. Like, they're like, I'm working towards a big goal here. And if I just eat shit. Like, it's about as great a show of, like overcoming an obstacle you know but then when they get to the last guy so like there's two people left and then the the second person goes you know what dude i'm done i'm fucking starving i can't do this no more all you gotta do is you take your little satellite phone you hit a red button and they go hey what's up and you go yep i'm tapping out i'm fucking done and you have to quit yeah that's the that's how long it goes for is until the second to last person quits. So your constitution breaks, basically. Until you give up and say, I can't do mm-hmm. this no more. You know? So they usually last a little under 100 days. Mm-hmm. There's one guy that made it over 100 days and they gave him a million dollars. You know? <laughs> and dude, he was like, he was already kind of a hermit. Like, he was like, dude, from the beginning, everybody knew, like, holy shit, this guy yeah. is going to fucking win. <laughs> but at the end, it's amazing because you spend so much time alone that you start reeling and thinking about what what is something that I could have done better in my life. And the guy admits on the show, like on the video, he's sitting here saying, you know, I have a sister that I don't really talk to anymore and I have family. And he's like, I really, I, I've been out here so long and I've been alone so long that I really want to just see them. I want to see how they're doing and I want to be more involved in their life and I want to know their children. And it like, people change, man. The really? people on the show, dude, it's fascinating human study. Yeah, And then, I don't give a fuck who you are. I don't care how tough you are. The last guy on every fucking season, and there's seven of them right now, or seven or eight, I think, every fucking time, they always bring a family member in to, like, sneak up behind them. So they, this is what happens. Once you're getting down to the last two or three people left, they start doing daily routines, or, or every two days, they'll come out and do a med check on you and make sure that, like, your organs ain't shutting down Make sure you're still alive. You didn't right. fucking catch your tent on fire because several of them did do that. Oh, wow. They literally caught their shelters on fire and then had to call in and be like, dude, I have nowhere to live. I burnt this fucking thing to the ground. Come get me. You know, hmm. the one guy did it in the middle of the night and they had to tell him like, dude, we can't we can't find you until like like five or six hours from now when the sun comes up. Wow. Like you have to like stay there and stay warm somehow, you mm-hmm. know, and like that's what he did, you know. Mm hmm. So when they're doing these med checks, that's usually when they let this guy know, dude, you won, you know? Right. And, like, they, they don't know, though. They have no fucking right. clue. They think they're So they're standing here, and it's fucking freezing cold. They're like, all right, dude, pull your shirt up. We need to check your heart. We need to look at your lung. You know, they're putting this thing on them. Meanwhile, they're asking them questions. Huh? Well, so how do you think? How's it going so far? And, like, this is the only... He has no idea. It's over. This is the right. only human interaction he's getting right. at this point is them every two days. But now they're, like, starting to, like, talk to him a little more because normally they don't. They're just like, yep, all right, cool, you look good. Hey, look, man, your health is, you know, you need to eat more fucking vegetables or you need to, right. you know, eat some food. You need to, like... You need to get some nutrition going. But um, they always have like a family member sneak up behind them and then tap them on the shoulder and go, you did it, you know? And dude, they break down. I don't give a fuck how tough they are. Yeah, Dude, they fall to the ground crying because they realize like, all right, all right, (laughs) I'm fucking done. I don't have to do this no more. (laughs) It's like a prison sentence, dude. It's like, dude, I'm fucking done. I don't want to do this no more. Yeah, it sounds intriguing. Dude, it's so fascinating yeah. because I don't care how tough you are. We're all fucking humans. And if you suffer enough, dude, there's a breaking point, mm-hmm. you know? I'm always fascinated with any story like that. When I, when I hear about, like, um, I have met a few Holocaust survivors. And, yeah. dude. The stories are. Whoa. Yeah, right. Whoa, man. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I mean, can you fucking imagine, you know, you know, being that old and now explaining that, yeah, I once had a family and they were wiped off the map and in a horrific, yeah. horrific way. Yep. And here I am and I survived and I persevered and, you know, and, you know, it's just, it's fucking unimaginable, you yeah. know, like I can't. I can't fucking believe it. Oh, yeah. you, know? you have no idea like how easy you have it until you hear like somebody else's like shit story. So it is Veterans Day. Uh, when they watch this, it probably won't be. But today is Veterans Day, and I'll tell you a story about me being a veteran. That this is on the same lines of what we just talked about. Is um, dude, I served in the army from ninety nine oh three, and I was very insignificant. Mm-hmm. I did not. I'm not a fucking Rambo. I wasn't a Ranger. I didn't jump out of airplanes. I was supposed to. But I declined airborne school because they told me it was going to be two month wait to go to airborne school Mm -hmm. or I could leave right now and go to Germany. So I took the orders to go to Germany and it wasn't a loss because I have four friends now that are like best friends of mine for the rest of my life. You know, so it was it all worked out. Uh, But I was I was a supply guy. Then I switched over to doing mortars for a little bit, but I I never went anywhere as a supply guy. I did a tour in Kosovo. Very insignificant. I was so fucking bored because the, the, uh, the, the contractors came over and took over my job. Mm-hmm. I had nothing to do, so I literally volunteered to go out with the infantry and do patrols and, and guard duty and uh, border checks at, on the border of Serbia and Albania. Like It was like, you know, like I, I was so fucking bored that I had to do something. But I, I didn't like, dude, I didn't kill 15 right, fucking right, right. people. I didn't do, yeah. I didn't save anybody. I didn't fucking... I'm not a fucking hero. Everybody wants, oh man, thanks I mean, for your service. Yeah, I mean, and I'm like, dude, served. I didn't do shit, dude. I didn't yeah, do shit. You know? I didn't do shit either. So, well, but it's you know, like so, like to me, like when I think about veterans, I, I try to always be humble. And I'm like, dude, there's guys out here that fucking sacrifice so much. Yeah. Memorial Day is like, a bad day for me. Yeah. Memorial Day is like, I personally reflect on like, dude, there were great fucking people that I knew that never came home. Mm-hmm. They were fucking not coming home. You know. But uh, anyway, so as insignificant as my service was, uh, like I said, I did a tour in Kosovo. So several years ago, I used to work at the Philly shipyard right. and I'm down there. <laughs> Excuse me. So there is a father and son that work in the maintenance department. And I thought they were Spanish. They were like olive complexion. Uh, I thought they were Spanish guys, you know, uh, of South American descent. I don't know, you know. And uh, so the one guy, the the father who's a little older, at one point I'm, I'm sitting here talking to him and I'm like, uh, you know, well, where are you guys from? You don't really sound like you have South American accents of anything. And he's like, uh, no, we're we're uh, Albanian, you know, oh, really? and I'm like from the Balkans. Really? And I was like, get the fuck out of here. You and your son are, are from Albania. And I'm like, dude, I was stationed in Kosovo. Mm-hmm. Oh, no shit. And then he says to me. Were you stationed at Camp Bonsteel? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I was. How about Camp Monteef? Yeah, I was there too. I, I used to bounce back and forth between the two camps. And sometimes I would go on fuel deliveries and we would, you know, you just move all over the place because you're fucking bored. And, and like, so I would take the, like, I had a, um, I had a machine gun. I was issued a machine gun. So I would take the turret. I would, they would ask for volunteers to go sit up in the turret as you're doing these fuel runs right and i would be the 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 turret gunner you know so i would sit up there with my shit and i'm ready to rock and roll and it's like there was never any issues we never got attacked it's not this isn't a war zone this is a peacekeeping mission but but they still might try to rob you so you know you got to be prepared to protect yourself so uh so the guy's asking me all these questions and i'm like yeah yeah so then his son walks up who's like a little younger than me and uh the father, uh, was, he's like, oh, yeah, dude, he was stationed at Camp Bonsdale, Camp Monteith. He was over there. He was in our country, you know? Mm-hmm. So then uh, at some point, the dad kind of walks away, and I'm fucking blown away. I'm like, dude, I've never met refugees from Kosovo, you know? And the guy goes, uh, dude, I really appreciate you guys being there. And he's like, and I'm like, I'm doing the same thing that I'm doing to you right now. I'm like, yeah, I don't know, man. I didn't really, I didn't really fucking do anything. Like, uh, I didn't do anything... Like, I wasn't that significant. I didn't do nothing special, dude. And he's like, no, no, no. No, you don't get it, dude. You have no idea. You don't know what their life is like over there. The dude says to me, my sister and my mom and all of my grandparents are fucking dead because the Serbians killed them, mm-hmm. you know? And he's like, you 
were one of the guys that stopped that. Yeah. I would be dead, you know? And I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't want to talk about this no more. <laughs> like, yeah. like I'm like starting to like fucking, I'm starting to tear up right now, honestly, because it's like, I can't imagine that, man. I can't right. imagine, like, dude, I, I think of myself as so insignificant. Like, I'm not doing anything special or crazy, you know? Like, I'm not fucking Rambo saving a bunch of... But the of, things that you take you know? for granted every day that are, like, everyday part of your life that you even get frustrated with... Dude. It's, like, something that somebody else is, like, you know... People don't know... <clears throat> people don't know what, what suffering is, no. man. They don't, they don't know, like... They don't know how bad it can get, yeah. man. I am afraid of, like, uh, you know, the big civil disputes in this country. I'm, I'm you know, I'm worried about... A major world conflict. As a, as a military person, I have to look at the big picture and, and see that, like, the Middle East is still very hot. You know, uh, the Asian countries are getting a little crazy right now. You got China and North Korea that are acting real fucking nutty. Mm -hmm. You know, you got down south, you know, Trump started a bunch of shit in Mexico, which is, like, to me, is so fucking stupid because there are neighbors... You know, there are fucking neighbors. You don't like that there's drug dealers down there? Dude, there's drug dealers in our country. There's drug dealers there's in drug Europe. drug dealers in the street. You know what I mean? There's drug dealers everywhere. Yeah. You're starting a bunch of shit. Dude, have some dipl d diplomacy here, man. Because mm -hmm. you're like, you're fucking around with our, our literal border, our land border. Yeah. And to me... I think that was my biggest issue with Trump was that he just... He didn't know how to conduct himself, dude. That's you know. I know Trump supporters that didn't act that, presidential. You know? Just yeah. didn't act. Yeah, I've I've talked to a lot of people that were like, "Look, I mean, you know, he was a president, and yeah. you know, that's who I voted for." Blah blah blah. But I just couldn't wrap my head around how unpresidential he was. Yeah, man, this ain't a fucking YouTube video or or like yeah. a rap video over here talking shit and acting nah, like an asshole. Just, like this, yeah, right. Anyway. Happy Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we won't go down the rabbit hole of politics, but it's, um, I just wanted to say though, like, like to me, that was my moment of realizing what you did made a difference. It, yeah. it made, it's, it's, yeah, uh, I mean, it's not like, it's not, you shouldn't discount it. Like you didn't do anything. Yeah. I mean, it takes a lot just to make the commitment to the military to be like, Whatever you tell me to do, I think my, my dad's boot my ass was the commitment. That was yeah. uh, you're getting the fuck out of my house one way or another. <laughs> yeah, but either way, I mean, it's you still went through the training, you still went through the conditioning, you still went away from home yeah. to serve your country to do whatever you were told to do, and look, you, you ran into somebody that it made a difference to. You know, that was uh, at, that is a monumental memory of mine. I don't think I'll ever forget that because I mean, dude, I do know people that have passed look. away uh, serving, and it you know it breaks my heart. It fucking breaks my heart. Yeah, I'll tell you, I was such a coward that I I knew four guys that that died in Iraq. And I knew them. I didn't... I Listen, I used to, like... This is the problem. Uh, you know, when I was younger and stupider and whatever, immature, I used to sit here and tell people, oh, they were really close with me. They weren't close to me. I'll tell you. Now I'm honest about my life. They weren't close to me, but they were people that I knew. Yeah. I served with them. They were in a different squad, same platoon, but I knew them. These are fucking guys that I knew. Right. I definitely fucking drank with them and hung out with them. But it's like... To think that, like, I left the military, and then shortly after, them guys passed away, hmm. you know, over there, and it's, like, the guilt. Like, like I remember thinking, like, I should, I should do something. I should say something, you know, like, I don't know. But then it's, like, you feel guilty because you lived. That's what it is. Yeah. You feel guilty that, like, I got out. It was, why, why did I get out, you know? Like, why did... I mean, you know? there's no real answer to why for anything. I mean, well, I had this sergeant. I had a, our platoon sergeant. Uh, he was like busting my balls, but he like it sunk in. He said to me, "You're really gonna leave us?" Like he said that to me. He's like, "You're really gonna, you're gonna abandon us?" He said that to me mm. as I was getting out of the military, and I remember thinking like. At the time, I was like, oh, yeah, whatever, dude. Yeah, whatever. But then after I heard about them guys, you know, dying, dude, it fucking haunted me. Mm -hmm. A large part of my addiction was the guilt. That, yeah. like, yeah, well, so, like, it wasn't just them guys. It was, uh, like, a friend of mine from Eddie Stone, this young kid. That, like, he was, like, the hang, hang around kid. Like, well, like, there was me and my buddies. We were a squad. And this kid was another young kid that we knew. 
I came home from the military and that dude knew that I loved cars and I knew a little bit about cars, but he thought that I knew what was like a genius. He had this Mitsubishi Eclipse and he kept like beating my ear about like, oh, I want to do this and I want to do that. And I, I remember telling him like, dude, you're fucking crazy. That's too much work. It's too much. Don't do it. And he started like annoying me, you know, like it just started like getting under my skin. So one weekend, me and my buddies are at my buddy's house in Eddystone and we're all preparing to go to the bar. I think we're going to bootleggers or something. So that kid, Joey, his name's Joey Shaftstall. The kid, Joey, calls us up. He called me. I didn't answer. He wanted to come hang out with us. I didn't answer. He called my other buddy, Jay. He called Scott. He called these dudes that I hang out with. He called all of them, and they answered, and they were like, oh, hey, Joe wants to come with us. And I'm like, dude, fuck Joe. Joe annoys the shit out of me. You don't know any better. You have no fucking clue mm -hmm. what life is going to throw at you. So, like, in my head, young, naive, stupid, I'm, like, in my early 20s, I'm like, dude, fuck this goddamn kid. He's driving me nuts. You know, he's, like, he's fucking up my ass about these goddamn cars. He keeps asking me all these stupid questions. I don't want to deal with him tonight. I just want to go out and fucking race out and have some fun. The next weekend, he tried heroin one time wow. and fucking died in his bedroom. That's terrible. His mom found him. Yeah. So, like, you know... Dude, my whole life is like that. My yeah. whole life is like these people that come and go. And then, it's like, some of them just don't fucking... They don't live through it, man. Mm -hmm. So, like, the guilt thing was, like, a large part of, like... This ain't a very happy episode, man. That's, that's fine. <laughs> but it's like... Um, I don't know, man. Like, I always reflect on my life now, and it's like... Uh, even the addiction thing, like like sometimes people will be like, oh, man, you're a veteran. You must know like a lot of people that died overseas. And I'm like, no, the addiction thing was definitely like a hundred times worse. Harder, yeah. hundred times worse. I have literally a hundred fucking friends yeah. that have passed away I because mean, of addiction. Experiences are different for everybody. I mean, you have people that served in the military, like, you know. Their job was to mow people down on a regular basis, and they have so, a hard time living with that. And then you got people, like you said, you know, your job was to ride the Tourette back and forth, and you know, you I mean, I like could have did anything. But, well, I mean, you could have been put in a situation. You were in the situation. I mean, you're on the fucking back of something with a fucking Tourette. You, you know, you yeah, fucking mow people down at any moment. You know? Well, that was the job. Exactly. I, it may not have happened for me, but I right. was prepared to do it. But, I, I guess. mean, aren't you kind of yeah. glad that you didn't have to? You know? I'm fucking supremely yeah. glad right. because this is the thing. I served with guys. Uh, there, I, in my mind, you before the episode, you and I were talking about how could somebody kill, right. kill another person, and <laughs> this is a good segue into my theory of there are three types of ways that a person could, in their head, be okay with killing somebody, killing another person. Me, I am ultra sensitive man i am an emotional human it is like i need to feel justified i would need to feel that this person is a evil fucked up scumbag horrible human if i was standing on the front lines of world war ii and adolf hitler was in Look, front of me you them, i wouldn't feel bad shooting adolf hitler right. or an ss soldier wouldn't feel guilty i would be like yep this is justified this is okay but there are another type of person, like the people that enjoy killing, they're fucking scary. That's your serial killers. And the military has some of them. Yeah. I've definitely met some people that I was like, whoa, this is a fucking crazy person right here, man. This is like, and, and they kind of weed them people out. Like when you start seeing weird, uh, like shit, like, like this person is just enjoying this too much. That's not good either. Like, mm -hmm. you got to go, man. We can't have you fucking... Because you don't know the difference between enemy and right. foe. Like, you know, like, like you don't know... Your allies. Allies and... Enemies, and yeah. al that's the right word. Allies mm -hmm. and uh, enemy. Like, you... you know, Like, that's a, that's a fucking scary thing. But I also have buddies who are, I guess, in, in a sense, mentally the perfect soldier. Where, to them, it's just a job. They just do this thing... They know, yep, this is what I'm going to do. And it does not emotionally affect them. Right. That is fucking mind-blowing to yeah. me. You know? I yeah, have a yeah. friend in particular, and I will never mention his name. Uh, I don't want people to think bad of him because I don't think he's a bad person. Mm -hmm. But he's just not... 
the same emotionally as as I am, dude. I am fucking, uh, you know, I'm yeah. I'm ridiculous. Look at me, look at me. I'm fucking ridiculous, man. I, if I'm mad, everybody mm-hmm. in the fucking neighborhood knows how mad I am. But if I'm happy, everybody can hear my jokes and me laughing and acting like a fucking asshole, you know. Right. But that guy never laughs too hard, never gets fucking mad. But if you were the bad guy. He will put you in the fucking dirt and then go eat a sandwich. Right. Like, yeah, this is what just happened. Mm. And that's what we, that's what today's job was, you know? Yeah. Kind of wild. And these are the guys that usually go on to work for the FBI or CIA. And like, they, they, it's just, it's just a job to them. You know, they have morals. They know. It's not that they don't value life. Yeah. It's just, you know, uh, I don't, like, I'm not going to sit here and act like I understand it because I don't. I don't get it. I don't don't fucking get it, dude. I, don't... I mean, I get, look, I had that whole situation with my dog. Yeah, yeah, who, yeah. Who, you know, obviously had like a past or whatever, and I had to put the dog down. Yeah. And, I mean, we're, you know, months and months removed from that, and I still am wondering, did I make the right decision? So I have you know friends. What I mean? Like, it's terrible. I have friends in prison, and in prison, I get along with prisoners and ex cons a lot. I think military and prison. Are a, they they have similar people, you know, like for some some weird reason, we seem to have the same issues when we both come out, you know. Mm-hmm. I have friends that are ex-cons and I have friends that are ex-military and we all seem to have this same type of uh, uh, PTSD or um, hyper alertness, uh, you know, paranoia a little bit. Like it's it's like this similar... But we also respect each other, and we know that, like, this is a guy that does not fuck around. We're usually very short and to the point. Like, any guy that I know that's an ex-con is usually like, don't fucking fluff this up. I don't want to hear no bullshit. Just tell me the fucking, tell me the truth right now, right. you know? And that's the military guys, too. The military guys are like that, you know? And uh, I don't know, man. It's always fascinating because the military, or the um, the ex-con guys that I know will tell me the same shit. They're like, dude, there are dudes in here. That are fucking scary, man. They yeah. don't get mad. They don't just... They just fucking... Sociopaths. Yeah, dude. He's yeah. like... They just walk around in their own little fucking world. And it's like, dude, if you get in the way, you they're going to fucking cut you open. Mm-hmm. You know? Wild. Yep. Wild. Scary world, man. Look, we're still on the screen, man. Yeah. We're fucking... So what, what, uh, what sparked that? We were talking about like uh, how like people can... like abuse a corpse of like, oh that's what it that's was. what the conversation was, was we were talking about because uh, we were talking about uh gaddafi and we were talking about like mussolini and stuff yeah. like, where they had executed these guys like these were merciless people who sure who died mercilessly which well didn't even said like did they fuck around with saddam and I they killed saddam him? was captured and executed oh uh, really so saddam was like captured in like a like a hole somewhere and yeah then, like put on trial and sentenced. And, uh, oh, and they then probably he was hung. in the United States. I no, thought. no, I don't think it was in the United. He was hung in Iraq. They hung oh, really? Him. And I think there's footage of it and all that shit. But like, they didn't like take Saddam's like body and like parade it through the streets. Whereas, I mean, it depends like, on how vicious you are. You I know, think, like, like I think if you are a merciless fucking dictator like Gaddafi yeah. was, or like how Mussolini was and stuff like that. Like I know Mussolini was like. Like uh, he was, he was stood there with his mistress, and they were they were shot execution style. But then they were like paraded through the town, and people would like abuse his corpse. So like I'm thinking like in the terms of like those people, the onlookers and the spectators that were like you know bashing his head in or whatever the fuck or like you know yeah but like, what if you he killed your family night. i get it i you get it. that's what that's what sparked the conversation i know that like, i'm an angry person yeah. and i think that that the people that are abusing that it's like corpse, the symbolism well to me like i would want some retribution of like knowing that dude i put hands on this guy's body like yeah. do you fucking harmed my family yeah i guess i would there's a certain amount of um, but dude, what's the difference people, at that point? They're dead. Well, because you get some form of satisfaction, yeah. a little bit of revenge. But don't, don't you feel like, you know? they, like, wouldn't you like reflect back on that and be like, man, I can't believe I did that. Nah. Like, like Gaddafi was stabbed in his anus with a bayonet. Justification, man. Yeah. I think at the end of the day. It's like, now, I'm not dude, saying like you need to treat his corpse with respect or anything. It's just what I'm saying is like, do you go home at night, sit with your family and eat and then go to sleep soundly without really thinking like... I think some people out there probably take some form of pride yeah. in, in knowing that. Let me tell you something, man. 
This is the honest truth. I told you, I'm an emotional person. I do believe that I could hurt people or kill somebody if I was emotionally stirred Yeah, I mean, I think if, like, somebody enough. did something terrible to somebody close to me, and, you know, like, that was the, the end result, is that that person died, you know, and I uh, I had the opportunity to maybe, like, tear your body to shreds or some shit, maybe. I wouldn't, but, I wouldn't feel yeah, bad, man. Yeah, you wouldn't man. think twice if, about it. Right? You and I are dads. Yeah. We have children. Yeah. I mean, that's what we're if talking about. If you hurt my fucking child yeah, or, or killed really my child in a very bad way, yeah. I'm telling you that I would do ridiculously violent things. I just think like And I would even of... go to the pri- I would go to prison cuz that's how fucked up our country is. I would go to prison mm-hmm. and I wouldn't feel fucking bad yeah. at all. Yeah. As know? like I love a uh, there's that video of the guy who uh executed the person who had like I think the maybe like raped his daughter or something like that. Yeah. Did you ever see that where guys at the So the, the guy phone... goes into an airport or something like that and well, shoots him right in the fucking yeah, head. Yeah, like you he's, know? he's on the phone and he puts the phone down and turns around and shoots the guy. Yeah. Yeah, I could see where that guy's coming from. But I don't think I would took it to the level of like, all right, now give but me But that his... might have been the only way he could have gotten to that guy. Oh, no, no, no. Know? I'm not saying he was wrong in what he did. I would yeah. I could totally see doing what he did. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I don't think beyond that I would have gone to the extreme of like, all right, now hook him up to my truck and let me parade him through the town. Yeah, I would do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't well, know. but I, I also, listen, there's like, I, I feel that I'm trying not to be political, but I think that there's a certain amount of, uh, in our country right now, we're letting people get away with shit that like, yeah. do once upon a time, we drew a hard fucking line in this country Listen, I got an American flag behind me. I'm going to start spouting my crazy alt-right shit right now. <laughs> but 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 seriously, man, once upon a time, there were lines. And you said, no, 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 this is a fucking line that yeah, we don't this is cross. What we do and, what we don't do. and I feel like we don't do that no I, more. It's and almost that's like you make excuses for people's terrible, abhorrent behavior. Like, well, they can't control so, themselves, so well, they do that. Remember that's when we were kids? Uh, I think we were in high school. There was a kid in Singapore that got caught doing yeah, graffiti got, on the cars, and, and they beat his ass with, with a Singapore bamboo cane. fucking stick. Yeah, like bet four you, lashes, I think he got. All but I'm, even one. Makes all I'm pass saying out. is, I bet you he never did it again. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. So, the well, name my of wife guy. wonders why I smack my son's ass yeah. after the fifteenth time I told him to stop kicking fucking holes in my walls. Right. Yeah, I, I bet you he won't was, do it again after that's this. That's the thing. Is like we grew up, we were a little bit tough. It was a little bit tougher. Like, I think only maybe twice in my life did my father ever have to put his hands on me. Yeah, but you time, seem like you were probably a calmer kid though. Like my, I was, I dude. Was. Genevieve, I was I don't, an easy. Kid. I could tell my daughter, I'm disappointed in what you just did there, and do she'll, she'll yeah. have tears. She'll but have tears. I mean, like, I mean, my mother disciplined us. Yeah, and I knew not to fuck around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't feel like getting my ass whooped by this But you also knew that if she, if it got bad enough, right. and she told dad, oh, you're I mean, in deep shit. Yeah, I'd have to do something pretty fucking wild for my dad to have to... Yeah. Me. That's yeah. kind of our house. That's kind of our house. Yeah. It's like, dude, I, I I yell a lot. I'm a loud person. My, we're all, we're a loud family. Yeah. But it's like, um, I'm really sincerely trying. Like, I hope when my kids are a little bigger, when my son's a little bigger, I think we're going to try a military approach and we're going to do, we're going to do exercise. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm pissed off at you right now. We're going to do push-ups until your arms are tired. (laughs) You know, I'm not kidding. No, I've seen, I've seen, uh, like videos and like YouTube shit of like, uh, interviews of families that do stuff like this. Mm -hmm. And they do say that there's a lot of good influence in this. And listen, your kid's getting tougher. This is not abuse. I'm not hurting them. You know, I'm not even right. touching them. You're going to do push-ups until your arms are numb. Now, I served in the military, and I remember that it was it fucking worked. I got in a fist fight in basic training with this other dude. That's how I lost his tooth, mm-hmm. right there. Most people don't even know that I have a front tooth that's yeah, knocked the noticed. fuck out. But uh, I lost that tooth because me and this this dude got in a fucking fight, and man, he he just like quick little like jab like bam like right to my freaking face wow. and it didn't break it didn't like knock a tooth out but it cracked it mm-hmm. and then over time it turned black and then the army dentist was just like um yeah dude we're just gonna pull it and yeah. i was like i was supposed to get an implant but i never fucking did but uh anyway so in basic training i get in this fight and drill sergeant's like okay you guys got a lot of fucking energy cool you're gonna do push-ups for four fucking hours yeah and dude I was like, 
four hours. What the fuck are you talking about? Four hours? Like you don't say nothing. Mm-hmm. First of all, You're this is a th- this is a thought hours? in my head. This is yeah. a thought in my head. It's like four hours. Are you out of your fucking mind? That's not possible. It's not possible. Mm-hmm. You do push ups for maybe a couple minutes, and then you stay in the push up position, and your knees are not allowed to touch the ground. Mm. The knees are not allowed to touch the ground. Your belly's not allowed to lay on the ground. And every time your belly hits that ground, dude, he flips the fuck out on you. And he's like, I'm telling you right now, you get your fucking belly up or I'm going to stretch the time out. And you're mm. just like, oh, my God. So it might not have been four hours. He might have said like an hour or two either hours. Either way. But let me tell you something. It's an ungodly amount of time to be dude, in that position. To, to be in that... isometric position for that amount of time. like to do like to do That's like saying like you're going to do like a 10-minute plank. Yeah, man. You can't do it. So I did, we were both, me and that guy were there for, uh, I, I think, he might have said four hours. I think we were probably there for uh, like an hour and 15 minutes Jesus. or something like that, Ugh. which is an unbelievable. Ungodly amount of time. But It's torture. Dude, when we were done, like we were physically exhausted and then had to go march dude, to yeah. the range and shoot our rifles because it was like, I think it was like seven in the morning or something when this Oof. happened. So, like, it was after we did PT for the day, because you do PT from, well, basic training, I think we started even earlier. I know when regular, when I served in the Army, I think it was 6.30 to 7.30. 7.30 to 9 was uh, breakfast and clean up at 9 o'clock to uh, 11.30, I think it is. This is the schedule we used to have in the military when I was in. This is 20 fucking years ago. But I think 11.30, 9 to 11.30, you worked. 11.30 to 1 was lunch. And then one to five, you worked again, you mm-hmm. know? So it was supposed to work out to an eight-hour day. Maybe my math is fucked. I don't know. Yeah. But um, anyway. Watch any good TV when you're in your... <laughs> Did I watch any good TV? I think that's the one thing that they, like, remove from your schedule. In basic training. Yeah. In basic training, no, you don't get was... nothing. Right. You know? And yeah. and we worked... In basic training, there was no work schedule. There was no eight-hour day. It was right. It was like a fucking 12 or 16-hour day mm-hmm. every day of your life. Yep. We would march to the range, which was several miles away, set up, uh, you know, you, you do your, your live fires, and then if you're not shooting, you could go sit on the bleachers. And that was like our only time to actually like sit here and bullshit and talk to each other. That was, that was like the only time mm-hmm. where we got to actually like, oh, where are you from? Oh, okay. And we would make jokes. Oh, you're from Texas. You're from Philly. Ah, oh, fuck Dallas. You Eagles suck, you know? And like, that was the only time we got to actually like interact a little bit you know so uh dude it's just uh i don't remember how this conversation started we were talking about abusing corpses abusing (laughs) corpses and then i'm talking about basic training which are not related to each other because people in basic training don't do that you know no i know yeah this is I know, a, I'm telling you. This audience, is how this, this is, if anybody's ever not listened to our show. You always think that we, like, are, like, horrible communicators, but I think no, we're I think fucking we're great. good. I think we're great. I think this is going to be our first on-air argument right now. John, it's not, knock it off, John. No, it's just, like, this is how the show goes. We just start talking, <laughs> and it's just two dudes talking. That's what it is. Sometimes so, so, we got a format. Sometimes we know what we're going to do. We have no format. Dude, dude, this is we the Veterans, this is the this Veterans, is the Veterans Day. Day. Day episode. That's what this is, man. So be happy that you got your video up and you got your flag behind you. It's This is the perfect time to have your My video little monsters. Finally. I locked the door so they can't yeah. get in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They can't come down here and cough on the mics. Dude, I'm not even worried. I'm worried about them, like, kicking this shit out of the way yeah. and knocking the fucking camera down. No, nah, that's cool, man. I'm trying to do video, man. Well, no. I mean, well, it's the first time we've done it. We look like we're on the set of Kaleidoscope in high school. Well, For it's For those that, that don't know, or... Kaleidoscope was, like, the, the high school news program that you watched. Or... So, I mean, that's what... Is that what it was called? That's was it we... Kaleidoscope? I think that's what we called it, but every, every yeah, school every has a different thing. Yeah, calls it something different, but it was yeah. called Kaleidoscope, right? I think so. I think so. Why do I think... I well, this like... is the thing. It was I, I I was designing this this set they call it you know in the film world this is a set mm-hmm. I mean I was going to get a black couch back here but I thought there would be like all right these guys are about to suck each other's dicks like you know we don't want to see that I might you know? come down here more than once a week if that's <laughs> maybe uh, when the cameras well we'll do the podcast on certain days like the weekends right but then like other days we'll schedule like time slots for um, fans only right fans only yeah. <laughs> Chris calls only fans, fans only. I don't know. It's O F or F O. I don't fucking know. Only Fo fans. or Oaf. Only off. fans. Yeah, only yeah. fans. Okay. Well, we're gonna do an only fans. 
Nah. But it's basically the same as this. We're not going to do porn. We're just going to sit here and talk shit. Yeah. So you I, think there's a fetish yeah, for that? No, there's. I think there's actually people on OnlyFans that don't do they adult don't content. jerk off or fuck each other or. Yeah, it's like this is where you go if you're a fan of mine. Like, let's do it. No, I don't if want, you're a fan I don't of ours, do a fucking only we're going to set up an OnlyFans. No OnlyFans. And what we'll do is, if you pay for the premium <laughs> package, we'll take our shirts. No, off. you know you do. Like, but then we're going to talk shit on you because that's what I do. What I'm going to call do, you nasty, homophobic terms. Here's what we should do now: that we have video, and we have you know we're on Spotify, we're on Apple, and everything. Like we have all the and like not for nothing, got a really nice fucking setup as far as audio equipment goes. But like Patreon. Patreon. You should do like a Patreon. Like, All right. I, I think I there's a few up. people out there to listen faithfully enough that they might get into you know paying five bucks a month for a Patreon. No, dude. Listen, if you're gonna listen, and you're gonna get it's at least a hundred dollars a month. No, it's you know? like it's it's like five to ten dollars. <laughs> it's anything we set the number to. We yeah. can listen. But, but, I don't give a shit. I'll tell you this. I'm such a fucking starving artist with this podcast. But I mean, like you could dude, do if somebody like gave saying, me one fucking dollar a month. Yeah, I would call it I'll a success, it. Yeah, dude. Right. I'll split it with you. We'll but here's go get the thing candy with the bars. Patreon is like if we were to like you know like we put our episodes out every Sunday, you know like every Sunday at nine a.m. That's when you can listen to us. But if with a Patreon, like if somebody's going to pay a premium to do it, you could release the the video of the episode on like a Friday, like maybe topless listeners. though. No, not even. I'm still on the fan zone. Yeah, I though. know you really want to do something nasty. <laughs> But I'm saying, like, you could have, like, certain perks to your Patreon or some shit like that. Or, like, you could have exclusive content. Like, we could go out and, like, fucking review a sandwich or some shit and talk shit or something. So I did do a Patreon account uh, back with Yardbird Tuna yeah. when I was doing that show. I have a Patreon account for my for my artwork. Yeah. yeah. So I set it up for that. And this is the funny thing is, dude, my mom is so awesome. <laughs> That she was the only, the only one subscriber you had? that had give was giving me five bucks a month, yeah. and I was just like, I dude, I felt so bad. I was like, Mom, I saved up like like fifteen bucks that you sent to me. <laughs> I'm just gonna give it back to you, and like, yeah. I think I'm gonna turn this off. I'm just gonna close. Well, this me, account. me and Shit Castle, I, I, he has a Patreon too. So what's like, his? I'll contribute to him. He's got, he's got one called Pull Up Your Plants. Pull Which, up your plants. Not for nothing. Shit Castle is a smart, smart dude. Sure. Like, and he is passionate about plants. Yeah, like, yeah, Like, really yeah. passionate about edible plants and ethnobotany and stuff like that. And he has a really elaborate website for it. Okay. And then he has his Patreon. And his Patreon has certain packages. Like, okay, with this one, you're a backpacker. You pay $5 a month, and this is the content you get. Or if you're a fucking, I don't know, whatever it is, a forager or some shit. I don't know what the fuck you would be. But then there's another tier, and then another tier. Yeah, and they're yeah. a little bit more expensive, and you get more shit out of it. So he's got a really nice Patreon set up. Yeah. So I went on the What one about, day. like, the hydroponic dealers? Like, what, are, what are you, the no hydroponic idea. farmers? That's the guys that grow weed <laughs> yeah. inside. Maybe they got in, something like, water else tanks for those guys. Shit. But I fucking subscribed for the five bucks a month, and then I set up my Patreon, and he, was, he subscribed to mine for five bucks a month. So we just cancel each other out. Yeah, yeah. And for the longest time, he was my only subscriber. Yeah. So it was like the $5 I was giving him, he was just giving it back to me. It was like it was a total wash. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, it was totally cool. But, like, he's super supportive of, like, my artwork and stuff like that. And, like, not for nothing. His fucking... I got interested in ethnobotany. Like, not that I'm, like, a fucking... Like, it's one of my, like, hobbies or nothing. But, like, his presentation of it made me give a shit about it. Well, you know I got a I mean? question for Mr. Shitcastle, uh, then, is how the fuck do I get rid of this poison ivy that's in my bushes outside? Because, <laughs> dude, I am hyper-fucking-allergic to that shit. Yeah, he knows some crazy cool shit about it. There's, like, one plant that, like, uh, will, like, cause bleeding. Like, if you were cut and you rub this plant on the cut, the bleeding will stop. Really? Like, he knows some cool shit. Hmm. Like, some really, really cool shit. Yeah. Yeah. We should have him on the show. He's, I actually talked to him. He said that he, he would be more than happy to do it. I mean, obviously, he'd have to call in. He's not... He's out of Yeah, so that's a whole other debacle, yeah. is having him call in or do a Zoom of some kind, which I'll have to battle that. Or maybe, and... like, if we get the same week off or some shit like that, maybe we can go out to his place or something. Where's you know? his place? In Colorado? Yeah. You want to fly out there? I, I told him a few times I was going to come visit him. He keeps asking me to go to Mexico with him next year. Really? Yeah, he wants to go to Mexico. He's, he's trying to bribe me with uh, Lucha Libre. <laughs> and he figures, you know what, if I, if I can convince him to go, I'll take him to a 
Lucha Libre wrestling show. So. Uh, you don't want to go to a donkey show? No. God, no. <laughs> no. Not a pervert. Who the fuck I'm a nerd. This, dude? I'm a nerd. I'm not a pervert. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a pervert, but I'm like a traditional pervert. He wants to, he wants to go see there big for the cultural. And fucking chicks with no dicks. He's like, interested in the cultural aspects of it and stuff like that. And like it's it's insanely cheap to go there. Sure, even, like yeah, round yeah. trip, like six hundred or forty dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Where are you going? Uh, I don't know how to say the name of the place. Okay, Hawaka. I don't know. Hawaka. Hawaka. Is it like Is that? Uh, fuck to say. I don't know. Shit Castle would have to tell you how. Is to it say. where the opium farms are? I have no idea, bro. <laughs> Like, All the but he's fields? like super, super interested in going. He really wants to go in the worst way, and he's like, "Man, that would be cool if you came." And like, you know, we sit there and we like we talk back and forth on this video app, and uh, and he was like, "I think they have like lucha libre down there." And as soon as he said that, my ears perked up, and I messaged him back, and I said, "That might be the only way you get me to go." You I don't know, man. Me. I think I think you should do this. Yeah, I think I might want to. Let me tell you something. I don't travel. I always tell you about the Portugal trip yeah. last year. The Portugal trip was the the first time in 20 fucking years that me and my army buddies from Germany, there was four of us, we were all in the same fucking room at the same time at my buddy's wedding. That's the last, that's the, that's the only time in 20 years that we were all together at the same time. Right. It was fucking worth it. Yeah. So I'm telling you the same thing. Go visit Mr. Shitcastle in yeah. Mexico. I mean, I'd like to hang Watch out with a Shitcastle donkey show. And record this, so. You know, get hit on by <laughs> transsexual prostitutes. Yeah. Whatever you're into, man. I'm yeah. not fucking judging. Like don't said, let the confet. Don't let the uh, American, American flag. flag. <laughs> the <Confederate> I know. <laughs> Let's make it worse. Yeah. Uh, dude, there's nothing worse. Do you know how annoying it is to me to see guys in the north? flying confederate flags yeah if you're from the south i give you a little because a it's little your tiny bit of yeah it's yeah like your history, i've heard your but if you're a guy from fucking pennsylvania that's got a confederate flag you're, you're a just, dickhead yeah you're no, a no, racist no. <laughs> no you're a cunt yeah you're, you're a, a cunt, cunt. You're right. you are just a vagina like a a little with fucking meat curtain <laughs> cunt you're not even a good looking cunt you're not a camel toe you're a flappy fucking worn out beat to death cunt you know <laughs> dry cunt the kind of just like hurts your dick it's like dude i don't ah, why am i doing this hey leave some meat on that pussy for me <laughs> but uh well on that <laughs> note happy long, veterans day <laughs> how long have we been going at it man i think this is it man all I think right we, you want to roll some music roll the music and let's get the fuck out of here all right all right brother see ya later Thanks for listening to Renaissance Manchild. Renaissance Manchild is a Yardbird Tuna production. If you enjoyed the show, please like, follow, and share. Any ideas or suggestions, feel free to reach out to us on Facebook or Instagram. Oh, shit! Mm-hmm. <laughs> you talk good.